Hey everyone, I'm Steve from GamersNexus.net and this is your weekly news recap of the hardware news for the past couple of days. Our game news recap should be on the channel shortly, if not already. That covers the game stuff, so now we're talking about hardware. The main news item off the top here is AMD's production of 14 nanometer FinFET LPP chips, which are low power plus, they're called. This is in cooperation with Global Foundries, the fabrication plant actually working on the production of these chips. And Global Foundries announced that the 14 nanometer LPP chips have achieved a level of success that they feel comfortable pushing into production. So AMD and Global Foundries are now producing their 14 nanometer chips and, is, and are assuring output of them into consumer and enterprise products in 2016. So you can expect 14 nanometer LPP devices in 2016. And these will include high power compute applications, consumer applications, GPUs, things of that nature. So it will be used in items that we on the gaming side will actually see on the market, which is pretty exciting to see a new process on its way from AMD and Global Foundries. And of course, we can't talk about AMD without also talking about NVIDIA. NVIDIA posted its financial data for quarter three 2015 today and projected out into 2016. So we have a good look at the future here. And for now, they've reported record revenue at 1.305 billion, a 7% year over year growth. And the GAAP reports are looking at a 15% year over year growth. You can find more information on the financials and all of that in the link in the description below. Bouncing back to AMD and our tennis match between the two major manufacturers, AMD this week announced its Radeon software accompaniment for its GPUs. So this is replacing Catalyst Control Center, which will now be retired. Radeon software is expected in the next few weeks. And we already have a full video about this on the channel, so check that out for full details. But the software aims to produce a minimalistic interface that's updated, modern, all of these buzzwords that AMD used in their call. And they're hoping to sort of upgrade functionality to make it a little bit easier to use than the Catalyst Control Center, which even though it works fine, sometimes it does look a bit dated. And so does the NVIDIA Control Center for that matter. But moving forward, AMD will be switching to Radeon software and they are retiring CCC. Check the other video for full information on that. The next news item is about liquid cooling. So EKWB or EK Water Blocks, as they're more commonly known, announced their pre-filled liquid blocks for the Predator AIO system. And this is an interesting AIO liquid cooling solution in that it's not the standard AIO. It's not the standard all-in-one. So the Predator system uses Quick Disconnect or QDC. And this is all built using technology that we saw a few years ago with PNY and server solutions and things like that. The thing with the Predator is that it's got one tube with QDC in it, and then you can plug in other systems. So if you want to have a sort of closed loop cooling solution for your CPU and your GPU, you can do that with the QDC valves, which allow an airtight connection of the tubes from multiple radiators, multiple pumps, without going to a full open loop solution, which might be intimidating to some builders and is certainly price prohibitive. So that is the EK Predator. We haven't tested it yet. We're not sure if it's actually good, how it works, but we will try and get our hands on one for a future video and article. CryoRig and other liquid cooling news has announced its new A series of liquid coolers, and these are pretty interesting. These actually mount the fan on the CPU block and the pump. So there's a 70 millimeter fan mounted on the pump and block, and this is meant for cooling nearby components like the VRM, which gets pretty hot. So if you've got an overclocking system and you're burning up your VRM heatsink, the problem with using an AIO or any liquid cooling is that there's no drafted air through a normal air cooler to cool down neighboring components. RAM is another one. So this block adds the 70 millimeter fan on the top of the CPU itself and then feeds to a normal radiator as expected. These are available in 240 millimeter and 280 millimeter variants with different size radiators. So there are thicker ones and thinner ones depending on your space in your enclosure, but this also impacts the cooling efficacy. So that's the Cryo Rig A series liquid cooling solution. Like the EK stuff, we'll try and look at these, but as always, check the link in the description below for more information. That is it for your weekly hardware news recap. Check the channel for the game news recap 
And as always, hit that Patreon link. The post-roll video helps us out a lot. I will see you all next time.